Imagine a world where you're not just a participant, but a connoisseur, a player. This is the realm of Pimp God, a brand that exists not to sell a product, but to sell a lifestyle. A brand that doesn't just cater to kings, it creates them. Pimp God is more than just a name, it's an ethos. An ethos that asserts that you are deserving of the finest things in life, that you are worthy of being treated as the royalty you are. Pimp God is for the discerning, the bespoke player in you. It's about embracing your inner king, about stepping into your power, about claiming your throne in this game of life. So, step into the world of Pimp God. Because you, yes you, deserve to live the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Because at Pimp God, we believe that every king deserves his crown. I'm going to spell it out. D-R-J-A-M-E-S-S-M-A-L-L. -S -S yes. All right. Yes. I just want to make sure. I don't need the scammers getting all the professor's donations. My, my, my brother has been through a lot. And I want to make sure my brother's good. All right. So make sure you support the brother. Uh, with and, that being and said, you yeah. always do. I tell people the only guy that ever really take care of me is Brother Rich. He oh, makes sure that that's always, always done from, from the beginning. You know, I take care of my elders. You, Dr. Yeah, Valentine, you, my you elders, do. I make sure you're good. Sister you Myra, do. I make sure you're good. So it's, it's an honor. You know, I'm blessed. And you're so respected. The people respect yeah. the way you handle your podcast. Indeed. It's an honor. It's an honor. Professor, let's get started. This is the, uh, 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 a very common question, million dollar question you hear a lot of people ask. A lot of people with melanated skin, very frustrated, very confused as to why uh, God will allow black people to go through what they go through. Considering what we know about slavery, consider what we see on the news every day, considering our own individual experience in this life, whether it's the school system, the jail system, uh, the education system, the workforce, it's like everywhere we go, the darker you are, you're always at the bottom. It always seems like there's some type of conspiracy against the darker skinned people. And it's like, right. um, it's, it's just tough. It could get tough psychologically on you. It could get real tough being a melanated person. Then on top of that, people are telling you, all, you know, you got, you got children to take care. You got a wife to take care of you. A man, if you're a woman, you got to cook for your family. You got to, you got to be strong every day, despite everything that, uh, a group of people has gone through in the last 500, 600 years. And people want to know why would God allow this to happen? I've heard many different, I've heard different reasons. The Moors, um, I've heard, um, you know, the, 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 in the Bible, they say we are black people are cursed, the curse of Ham. So I've heard different things, but I haven't heard your perspective, Professor James Small. It's a question that we want to know. Um, it seems like when the hell is it going to end? Professor, if we got all this magic and power and the, you, like you said, the ancestors, why did, why did this have to happen to our people, my brother? First of all, I'm not informed, nor I'm instru am I instructed by the Torah, by the Bible, or the Quran. My conclusions, my analysis is not based on anything from the Abrahamic confusion and illusion. <laughs> That's Get what you call it. it. Confusions and yeah. illusions. All right. The reason people are having problem trying to figure out why God let this happen, mm -hmm. because they're looking for God in every place except in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Mm -hmm. The reason people are having problem trying to figure out why God let this happen, because they're looking for God everywhere except where they should look for God in the mirror. Mm -hmm. There isn't a single African culture, nor is it expressed in a single African language. And even those who are talking about Kemet and Medrinecha, they're expressing what they're looking at very wrongly. Mm -hmm. The Africans never saw God as a people, person, place, or thing. Mm -hmm. The Africans in all of their language saw God as the totality of everything, including you. Let me say that again. The mm -hmm. Africans saw God as the totality of everything that exists, including you. And if you don't carry out your role as the God of your kingdom, which is yourself, and you're looking for some God in the sky or in the ground or in the wood or someplace else, you're going to be in a situation black people find themselves in now. You're mm -hmm. chasing some illusion that's dead and on a cross. 
or you're chasing something or losing, that's a mystery um, that makes you pray a certain amount of time a day, or you're chasing some illusion that you say brought you some laws that has never worked even from the even for yourself. Because when I read your documents, you're all committing genocide against whole people, and so your God told you to kill all these people and take their lands, and so you can't say you believe in all of that. When the very gods you saying you believe in makes the people who brought it to you rich by killing you, because now you become the best killer of yourself. So that's not the God I'm talking about. Matter of fact, the word God does not encompass, it doesn't have the capacity to describe what the African means when they talk about Jianyami, Inyan Kampong. Uludumari, they're talking about the universe and everything in it as being the divine, including you. Mm -hmm. And so if Africans want to understand why we're in our situation, because you don't have the courage to be the God you were created to be. You want to be a slave. You want to be a servant. You want to be Abdul. You want to be the servant of Jesus. You want to submit to Yahweh. Well, I don't submit to a damn one of them. I don't submit to nothing. Mm. I am the universe. You are the universe. We are all just expressions of aspect of the divine totality. And our responsibility is to free ourselves and fight for ourselves, not wait for some mystery God or some mystery potion or some black magic to do anything. We lost the war with the Europeans, which didn't start 500 years ago. That's when the African-American experience begun. Mm -hmm. We were in this war with the Europeans when the Hittites, when the Hyksos first invaded our land in Northeast Africa. And then the Hittites followed with their invasions twice. Then the Assyrians followed with their invasions twice. And we're now talking almost a thousand years of enemy taking our land. And then you have the Romans and the, the Greeks and then the Persians coming in twice. And then you have the Romans coming into North Africa and creating the mulattoes that we now call Moors for the most part of the history they're talking about. is not a black history. It is a mixed race history. Then you got the Vistagoth, the Germans invade North Africa and drive the Romans out. And then the mixed breed Arabs come in and mix with the black folks who call themselves Moors and drive the Vistagoth, the Germans into Spain and the Romans back into Italy. So we're fighting wars for about 3000 plus years before we really got our behinds whipped. And we got whipped because we felt become the enemy is the best way to defeat the enemy. So we converted wholesale in North Africa to Islam. And in the East, the Aksum Empire under what's the brother's name uh king anus anus whatever it'll come to me became a christian ethiopia didn't start christianity they borrowed a christianity that was started by some mixed race and black folks in turkey in what became the benzantian empire and they took that and spun it and made what they've got and in partnership with the coptic church which was the blacks in Egypt breaking away from the Romans and, and Constantine and trying to keep their culture intact. These religions were first not churches like we know them today. They were the everyday culture of the people. But when you get conquered by another group that dominates your society, you have to hide to express yourself. So churches grew out of people having to be themselves in secret. And then you're hanging on to belief because you're no longer in control of your daily reality. Because somebody with a sword that just kick your butt is in control. And the way you handle it, we made a fundamental mistake. Let's become them and defeat them the way we did them. But you can never be a better killer than the killer. You can never be a better thief than the thief. You can be a good thief and a good killer. And we've proven that. We kill ourselves better than almost anybody. We steal from ourselves better than anybody, from one end of Africa to the Caribbean, to the US, wherever we find ourselves in Europe. But what about becoming the African again? How did the African make a decision 
who is in partnership with me? Who can I trust? Who do I build friendship with? Who do I build alliance with? What must their understanding, not belief, but their knowledge-based understanding of how this world works? If you look at the Yoruba religion, it's not about no believing in one God. Many of us who have become Yoruba or practice the religion of Ifa in the methodology used by the Yoruba, because there's no Yoruba religion, there's a Yoruba people. They practice, practice an understanding of the sacred science that they call Ifa, which means the wisdom of the universe. Okay. And so what is that body of wisdom? It tells you how to have a relationship with one another based on humanity and empathy. Not how to rob and steal and carry on envy and jealousy and hatred and violence in order to seek power. And so because we got beat up physically, we think all we have to do now is become physically better at beating people up than the people who beat us up and wonder why nothing is changing because you become your own worst enemy. Africans never worship a God, a thing or a person. Africans realize and participated in the fullness of the universe itself. Remember, the planet Earth is just another object in the universe. We're spinning in outer space like everybody else. We are just as alien as any other thing on any other planet. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're just part of this greater universe. Everything mm. in the universe affects us and we affect everything there. Well, the Afri what we're calling African religion, which I prefer to call African sacred science, is an understanding of that relationship and the kind of communal, collective, cooperative cohesion it will allow one to have when you practice it based on the knowledge of it so that you can't be conquered. All of Africa was never conquered. There are people in Africa that didn't even know the slave trade took place until recent years. They didn't even know it happened. Okay? Because they were able to defend themselves. There were war. We fought wars in Africa against the European, but the European came out of a culture of domination, destruction, and death. It's a killing machine. Study the history of Europe going back before the Greeks and the Romans. And you won't find 10 years in the last 3,000 years when they weren't fighting a war with one another or multiple wars. That is their culture, a culture of wars domination, destruction, and death. You think you're going to outdo them? We tried. We should have retreated back to being ourselves. And that's what we need to do now. We used to sing a song in the 60s. It says, who would survive America? Very few and very, no, very few crackers, no ends at all. Or very few ends, no crackers at all. All right? The only people that would survive would be those of us who was willing to be African enough to behave in a manner that nature became your friend and your partner and you became a friend and partner of nature. That the cosmology became your friend and your partner and you became a friend and partner of the cosmology through an understanding and a gaining of the knowledge that allow you to develop the communal, collective, cooperative relationship both internally and externally that will allow for that to happen. You're a part of God. People say, oh, God create everything. No, I came from between the legs of a black woman out of her vagina as a result of my father's penis having a relationship with her womb by her vagina. So if God creates, then who would my mama and daddy? Were they not creating me? Isn't that how human beings get created? Mm -hmm. So if that's how human being gets created, then mama and daddy is a part of God that carry out creation. Does that make logical sense to anybody? Oh. <laughs> it doesn't make sense without me saying it. But we'd rather have an illusion saying God created. Yeah, God created. If you want to use the word God, that's an English word to describe that totality. But that is not what you're describing. When we say God, we're talking about an individual, a man or an entity or something up there that makes decisions for the good and decisions against the bad. That's not how nature works. That's not how the universe works. That's not how nothing in cosmology works. 
Everything is cause and effects, positive and negative, fighting for balance and harmony. Action and reaction. Mm -hmm. And the Africans understood that. So if you look in their language, any Bantu language, you'll see their word for people, person, place, or thing. All of them have, have their word for God, either as a suffix or prefix, which is to say that God is in everything and everything is in God. It's a oneness, mm -hmm. but you must be conscious of that oneness. Mm -hmm. And you must be able to practice based on the knowledge and understanding, not an attack on nature, but having a complementary partnership with nature and everything in it. You know, you don't pollute the river. You know, you don't pollute the earth. You don't pollute the air. All of those are anti-antagonistic relationships towards your brother and your sister. Nature is your brother and your sister. And so how do we see that when we study African culture? Culture is not the clothing we wear. It's not the hairdo. Culture is the concepts, ideas, and principles that you're trying to teach with the hairdo and with the clothes and with the dance and with the music and with the drama. You're trying to teach concepts, ideas, and principles about how the universe works, how the human body works, how the ecology works, how the environment works, and how it all works in harmony. And so that's why you create metaphor and allegory. That's why you carve statues like Shango behind me being the king. There's no person named Shango. That wood is nothing. That's wood. I could chop that shit up and carve another one. <laughs> what I'm trying to say with that carving <laughs> is the symbol of the king talks about having courage, talks about getting rid of the ego, talk about destroying arrogance, talk about destroying envy, talks about destroying jealousy so that you raise yourself principally above to be an example for others to follow. So that's why they use the symbol of the, the one thing in the environment that is supposed to be representative of the totality for that environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but we, we try to take our Christian form consciousness and then express African reality through that Christian Judeo-Islamic consciousness. It doesn't work. People say, yo, we're in Africa, um, the brothers and sisters are Muslims. Yeah, I was a Muslim. I was a Haji. I went to Mecca. I don't think you were born yet, Brother Rich. You know, I mm. was an Imam. Mm. My name is Al-Haj Amin Ashahid, the faithful witness. I noticed I don't have no Abdul in there. I was no faithful slave of the witness. I wasn't the faithful servant of the witness. I was the faithful witness. Right. But that wasn't that approach to life that that the Arab have brought forth to the world and the Turks is really the Turks. The Arab may have initiated, but the Turks took the system from them back in the eighth century. Okay, we call them all Arabs, but they're not. So you had Kurds and Turks and Eastern European have created this religion called Islam, have written all these hadith and interpreted the, what is supposed to be like based on their barbarian anti-human, anti-nature, domination, destruction, and death culture coming out of Europe and Southern, Southwestern Asia. So stop playing. If people want to know truth, then study. And if you've been studying any of these religions, you can't come to any other conclusion than what I've just said. Yes, you can use any of them to do good. We use Christianity to do good and help ourselves across a lot of difficult times here in North America. We use Islam in West Africa. We use it to help us through some very, very difficult times. But some of the biggest slave traders in West Africa was the Muslim community. You know, let's not miss that. <clears throat> we fought jihads, wars against one another to conquer and take control and convert. And those who didn't, we sold them to the enemy. And now we want to pretend that there's some special God because we pray a certain way, we wear a kufi a certain way and cut our beard and shave it a certain way that we are somehow different and better than the people whose children we sold as prisoners of war to the most barbaric bunch of garbage Europe could produce. 
Know your history will erase the mystery. Know your history will erase the mystery. Let's come back to the initial question of God so people can feel because they're like, oh, that's more attacking our religion. We have to beat him up. <laughs> I am attacking your religion. You can practice any religion you want. But if the result is no better than what you've been getting, you better come up talk to me. <laughs> right, right. Uh, listen, Malcolm said, if ain't did no more for you than it had done to this point, you don't need it anyway. Stop playing. Stop playing. You know, we look and we see something doesn't work. But because the enemy does it, because it's a copy of what the enemy does, we do it until we can't do it no more, even though it's not working at all. It's not working at all. That the beautiful literature that they've written down. Well, you can't write down the wisdom of the universe, fool. What book is big enough for that? You can't write down the story of creation. What book is big enough for that? Stop lying. Stop playing. Stop being children. The white people's lack of understanding, his lack of capacity to comprehend reality. It doesn't even have the courage to care whether it destroys itself. So it destroys everything else in its path. Domination, destruction, and death. In the African mind that's organized around African genesis and authenticity, God is every and all things at once, including me and you. It's not a person. It's not an ethnicity, it's not something up in the sky or down in the ground or made up of wood. God is everything from the bumblebee to the fly, from the wood to the human, from the cloud to the gases, from the water to elements in space. We don't know. All of it makes up that thing that you call the divine. And you're a part of it intricately. And you're made up of all the things that make up all the things. In Africa have sacred science systems, which we erroneously call African religions, but they are sacred science systems, which some call the wisdom schools. But the Africans never call their system a wisdom school. They call it their sacred science, their understanding of cosmology, ecology, and the human beings role in it. It's, who is supposed to protect you from the lynch man, except you come to kill you, kill him. Indeed. Not being afraid to kill him and you're going to blame God because you were a coward? Indeed. Well, Professor, what, what I, what I want to know also is, um, and that was a thorough breakdown and I definitely appreciate it, but I, I know a lot of people are curious, Professor, before mm -hmm. we took on the Abrahamic um, religions or whatever you call them, Judaism, Islam, Christianity, a lot of people say we were doing something that caused us to fall once we fell we got indoctrinated with those religions what were we doing were we doing something professor fall from where grace what's fall the hell from, is great? what is grace what, what i'm trying to say is uh we're at the bottom right now understand. professor we, we don't even have a black community we don't own any of this so i'm talking about when we own shit, professor when we had when we had our own we still we own it do you want to fight to keep it we still own everything in the ground in africa but you want to stand by and let somebody else come and steal it and talk about God didn't stop them. You deserve losing it. What were we practicing when that happened? We are God. We were practicing knowing that we were God having a human experience. And we still and we allowed ourselves to be frightened and intimidated of death by mm. this brute. Mm. Once you became a coward and not willing to die for what was yours, you have a right to be imprisoned. You have a right to be enslaved. Mm. We became cowards, you say. Desaline told us, freedom or death. And when Desaline lived and articulated freedom or death, Haiti was winning the revolution. When they murdered Desaline and went back to the Catholic ball, Haiti mm -hmm. lost the revolution. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. Malcolm X told you, mm -hmm. price of freedom is death. And he showed you how you can, you have to be willing to die like he was willing to die. But you're not willing to die like Malcolm, so you don't deserve the freedom. <laughs> plain and simple huh? plain and simple water is wet that was a simple the answer that was a simple answer professor 
but it's, it's deeper and that we have to be able not to want what the murderer wants. Now, if you want to be like the murderer, but you ain't as good a murderer as he is, you can't blame God for that. Mm. You want to be like the murderer. You want to be Frank Lucas. Mm. You murder some black folks with dope, make me five million dollars. I want to be Bumpy Johnson. Bumpy Johnson. Okay. I want to be Nicky Barnes. Yeah. Ask them what it was like at the end of the day. I know a couple of them. It wasn't all that the movie said it was. I can guarantee you that. Right. So let's come to now. Here we are in Black America. Mm -hmm. About 60 million stone. White folks say we 45 and they miss about 15%. But okay, I'm saying 60 and I think I'm still being modest because I'm not talking about my African Latino brothers, right? Who would make mm -hmm. us about 90 million if they were to wake up for the fact that a language don't determine your race, right? Nobody mm -hmm. called me British. I'm not considered to be Anglo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I speak English. Right. You see me as an African, but if you speak Spanish, you'd be black as midnight. You're no longer an African. So that kind of ignorance is what we have to fight again. Know the truth. And this is an old dictum long before any of the Abrahamic religion going back beyond Kemet. And the truth will set you free. Know and understand your reality. When you die and it puts you in that casket, they do like we did, brother Sekou. Then the other day, we buried him in a wooden box in the ground. When Sekou rots, his body will break down into the 400 plus minerals that makes his body up and it will dissipate back into the earth where it came from. Mm -hmm. We have dirt at the end of the day because all the vegetables we eat is made out of dirt. Mm -hmm. you no, know, think about it now because we don't think about that. We put a little carrot seed in the ground. And then the dirt creates this carrot, right? We put a tomato seed in the ground and the dirt creates this tomato. So the dirt becomes the tomato. We don't even ask how does dirt become a tomato? We just gobble down the tomato. <laughs> All right. The energy that's in that tomato is what we, the reason we gobble down the dirt that makes up the tomato, because we want the energy that's in the tomato to energize our body so we can keep being animated right so our bodies like me now here i'm 78 i'm talking i'm moving i can lift things i do my exercise every day i be curling my little weights and stuff you know what i'm saying trying to just keep this machine going well i'm matter and i'm energy we accept that the science that we think we know today says neither can be destroyed. So why are we even thinking about death? Because of fear and ignorance. And when someone cuts you off, just one generation from being instructed and informed by your culture, you're in a state of ignorance towards your who you are. And the only chance you have to put in any fighting back is to try to become who they are. And if their total way of life is making sure you never become who you should be then you now become the master of keeping you from becoming who you should be i hope that was made simple enough and then back to god god ain't a person place or thing god is everything and i'm a part of that everything you brother rich is a part of that everything when my mother and father gave birth to me they had sex they must have had a good old time I, I ain't even embarrassing. <laughs> had a good time. Huh? I had a good time. And at the end of that good time, Daddy shared all of what was him with Mommy, who shared of all of what was her, and all of what was him and her became me. I am they. So they're not dead because I'm them going forward. When I die, those eight children I have already, they're already me. They're me going forward. The 20 something grandkids I got, they're me going forward. I am eternal. Right. Indeed. We are the universe. We function the way the universe functions. That's the way of life of the African being. Not some ego, arrogant, envy, jealous, murderer, thief, marauder, seeking power and pleasure. 
as we've learned from the incomplete man, the, 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 the depreciated being, okay? There's some things in nature that does not have the capacity to comprehend divinity. So they make themselves divine. They turn God into man. Amen. And then they kill the man that they turn God into. They say, well, we kill him, but he's going to rise again and come back. Then they'll be ready to kill him again with a new story twist. A new story twist. <laughs> yeah. And then the other story, <clears throat> most people don't understand. When you read the Quran, the Quran is made up of the Old Testament, New Testament, and the last re re the last revelations coming from the prophet. They're all the same religion at different times in history. And what it was designed for was to civilize the barbarian that invaded Northeast Africa. We gave them that body of knowledge. But we didn't give them everything. We gave them enough because we thought that it would civilize them and stop this genocide that we had been a couple of thousand years involved in. But it didn't. He took what we gave them and expand his ability to commit genocide on the world and took over the whole globe. So we must, we must take responsibility for that. But now we need to go back and find what we left behind. Because you can't tell me that we can go to church every Sunday. The prison of millions or more black people in Christian, they're Christians. One small, one fourth of them become out Muslims. Indeed. You know, uh, real quick, Professor, um, when it comes to, you know, you're talking about um, freedom and this concept of freedom. And oh, yeah, that's I like that word. Yeah. One of the things that get brought up with freedom, uh, two good things that get brought up when it comes to getting your freedom is uh, economics gets the conversation economics. You know, the brother Rock used to always talk about economics. Yeah, you know, um, I the rock. That was another, another, another thing that gets caught up uh, brought up is yeah. spirituality what i want to ask you those is two good things to bring up when it comes to freedom what mm -hmm. about developing a language separate from the english language how much of a, a, a we, we already have languages separate from the english language they're not all the smoking all over africa you don't need to develop a new language. You don't think we no. need to develop a new? You just no, think we need to learn one about. We need to learn any one number of our languages that's available to be learned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Starting from Swahili, people say, "Well, Swahili have some Arabic relationship, then dump Swahili. Go to the Akan, go to the Yoruba, go to the Shana, go to the Inabeli, go to the Zulu, go to the Khoikhoi, Khoisan. Yeah, we got a bunch of languages. We don't need a new language." Well, Matter not a new language. An advantage, it would be an advantage for every African child, especially in the Western Hemisphere, to learn an African language because you will see the world quite differently. You will see the world quite differently. You would stop saying God, and in your brain is a man somewhere up in the sky. Right, right. It's supposed to be helping you out. Because you righteous. And a damn one of us can even live up to the standard of what any of those religions call righteous. Not even me. Right. And I'm a good dude. You know? So let's stop playing that game that the European has put you to play. Mm -hmm. While he robs you blind, turn you into all kinds of freak in order to let you become millionaires. You know, <laughs> cat or brother cat, whatever his name, he, he wouldn't lie. He's mm -hmm. telling the comedian, he's telling the truth. Right, People right. know they got turned out and all kinds of stuff for the money. And they're coming out trying to be the B-boy. Cut the, cut the stuff. Let's deal with truth. Indeed. Most of our people, if you look at what happened in America, from the time we got here, we were fighting. Okay. Prince Hall was formed in 1780-something. The AME Church was formed in 17, I mean, 1777, Prince Hall. AME Church is born in the same time. The ba Black Baptist Church is born around that same time in, in, in the 1770s, 1780s. Meaning, from the time we got on the soil, we were fighting for ways to remain ourselves. But when someone takes away your institutional framework, 
takes away your ability to use your language to communicate. You've got to then use your understanding of reality to take his institutions and recreate them so that his institutions become the sanctuary for you as you try to secretly maintain, maintain within you your institutions. And so we use the black church like it was a nuclear bomb. And then we forgot what the hell we were doing in the 50, late 50s and early 60s and try mm -hmm. to imitate white Christians. Mm -hmm. The black Christians of the 1800s and the 19th century were not imitating white Christians. Mm -hmm. Out of that church came our politics, our sociology, our education. It was the sanctuary in which the African world recreated itself behind the walls of a Christian facade. Mm -hmm. But not having any access generation after generation after generation to an African way of creating institutional frameworks, we settled for what we had. But there was always those people coming along all through the centuries that were telling us, let's go back to Africa. Let's, 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 let's use an African way. Voodoo never died. Voodoo is an African word for the totality of the universe. It means the essence of God in things. It comes out of the foreign language and the area language. You know, we never lost our way. We just was blocked from using our institution. And we were forced to then transform the European institution to serve the aspirations of the African community. We name everything African, the African free laws, the African, this is 1700. The African Methodist Church, the African Methodist Episcopal Church, Free African Society, the African Baptist Church. We didn't wait for Adam Clayton Powell, Jesse Jackson to use that word African. We were using those words in the 1700s and 1800s to name all of our organizations. We knew who we were, but we were not allowed by law and by tyranny to practice who we were using methodologies that came out of our history. Now we can do it because we've fought enough. We've, we've kicked down enough walls and enough doors. We can go back to Africa and we have gone back to Africa. And many of us have relearned how our ancestors saw reality. We have relearned how our ancestors saw themselves in cosmology and ecology. And we are coming back and trying to teach one another. Don't tell me about some dead God and some God you pray to every day, but the only thing that he can give to you, can't even get you a pass out of prison. It just lets you stay out of trouble in prison. I'm not into none of that. Okay. And come telling me that I'm the chosen. And I like some of us, any brother and sister feel that you were chosen and you were given land, get on El Al and go to the land. We'll take it back. What you bother me for? Okay. Stop playing. It sounds good when you rat tat tat on all this off. The Bible said this, but the Bible is a is 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 a fairy tale document that's only a few seconds old in terms of time. Mm. It doesn't represent anything significant in terms of how the world was formed or designed. Most of it is plagiarized African knockoffs, philosophically. Indeed, indeed. P Professor, I want to um, get to um, a couple of questions from the people. I, I want to monitor mm -hmm. your health and make sure you get your rest, Professor. Um, so I want to get to a couple of questions before we get out here from I want to give them the opportunity. They in the chat arguing and shit, man. These people crazy. Don't, in the chat. don't argue. Love ye one another that ye may be loved. It's never your religion teaches y'all. Fighting like cats and dogs. But um, mm -hmm. let me put your cat chat back. Well, hold up, Professor. Um, make sure you support the elder. He does amazing work, has done amazing work uh, in our community. I want to make sure you support the brother. He recently has gone through a, a health situation where the brother hasn't worked for a couple of months. And I just want to make sure the family takes care of our elders while they're alive instead of waiting for them to transition and then saying, oh, man, I wish I could have did this. I wish I could have did that and talk good about him instead of talking good about him. Um, you know, talk, let's do good by him now instead of talking good about him like how we usually do and you know give him his flowers while he's alive so his cash app is on the screen dollar sign dr james small all right let's get to a couple of questions professor yes sir question all right um do you think that a part of our plight 
is turning our backs on the great black mother. Is that one of the reasons why we uh we fell, Professor? Well, I don't believe we've fallen. Well, you know, you know what I you know what I mean. You know what I mean. I know what you mean. We that was one of the reasons why we think we've fallen. And see, if you think you've fallen, then you've fallen, even though you're standing upright. I, I hear you. I hear okay. you. Now, the great black mother is, is a symbol, right? When the universe decided, let's look at it now, the totality of everything. I mean, we don't know the beginning or the end of the universe because there can't be a beginning or an end, right? Because if there's a beginning, something was there before to cause it to begin, right? So the concept beginning is, throw it out, doesn't exist. That means the concept ending doesn't exist. Throw those two things out. Your Alpha and Omega. Throw it in the goggles. It has no place in logic or in common sense. Then we come to the Black Mother. If one was to be scientific and logical and reasonable and even theological, when the universe or what you wish you were calling God decided to be human, it decided to be a Black woman. Mm -hmm. And she creates everything else through her vagina and her relationship with the thing we call God itself. It can't create a man first because he ain't going to bring no babies through his rectum. Mm -hmm. So let's be real. So when the, when, the, when the universe, when God, when whatever the, we want to describe it, when it decided to be human, to have that aspect of itself. See, cause I put it simply, we are God having a human experience. Mm -hmm. We are an aspect of the divine essence having this experience. The first aspect of the divine essence having the human experience had to have been a black woman. And mm -hmm. she gave birth to the rest of the human being. And if you trace yourself back, if every human being in the world today began to walk backwards in their gene pool, they all end up at one woman. And it would be a black woman. And if that one woman that we all end up in implodes it would be an aspect of god having an experience to be human again i hope that makes sense i try to make oh it yeah fun. oh yeah okay and so the metaphor of the black mother you know because even if you go back to the oldest religious book we know is the pyramid text mm -hmm. and i've read it um, recited it before that first chapter on the Genesis chapter where Amon says I create myself out of myself mm -hmm. I cause existence to exist so that existing might exist and when I realized that I existed my art was at my side mm -hmm. that's the first manifestation of the black mother he, he talks about then he said I spat out shoot then I coughed up Tefnut. Shu is the masculine. Tefnut is the feminine. And they created Geb. Geb is the masculine, the earth. And Nut. And Nut is the feminine. And they created Asar. Asar is the masculine. And Aset is the feminine. And they created Nephthys. Nephthys is the feminine. And Set is the masculine. Everything in nature, according to our ancestors, in the oldest written document we have, talks about this so why am i going to listen to the abrahamic books when i got a book 40 50 000 years older than them telling me what's up but it gets deeper than that in the end amon says after creating Ptah and ra and all of these things amon says having created everything that my heart desired i then expanded in Meaning I, the divine creating God, is in everything. That's what our earliest book, that book, if I'm going to be informed and instructed by a book, I'm going to be informed and instructed by my mother and father's book, not by their murderous books. Right, right, right. And then one more thing Amon says before that dissertation ends. Now he then said, I created myself out of myself, right? And then I created all these things, right? Earth, sky, air, da, da, da. And my art, the feminine principle and truth, justice, righteousness, harmony, balance was at my side and I recognized myself to even be. But he closes the dissertation by saying, and I came from my mother, Noon. 
the black waters. Mm. Now that's my Bible. <laughs> 30, 40,000 years older than the mother folks Bible. And right. once you study my Bible, you see that everything in their Bible was copied from my Bible and plagiarized and recast in another culture at another time. So I don't need to go to a counterfeit when I can go to the original. And then that's not enough because even when you write things down, you've created a limitation. Mm -hmm. Is that you can't write down all that is. Right. You can't write down all that has happened. Right. Impossible. Right. And that's why the Africans maintain the oral tradition, oral tradition. Right. which right. has no boundaries on it. It simply requires memory and practice. Right. And monitoring. That's where secret societies come in. So if I was a priest and my job was to recite and remember a thousand years of history, that's all I have to perfect. Your job as another next priest is to recite and remember the, the next thousand years. And the next priest's job is to recite and remember the next thousand years. And we can do this in recitation or in drum beats, drum rhythms, or in a flute rhythm. And believe me, the, the ears of the people can understand the vibrations of the horn. The ears of the people can understand the vibration of the drum, just like you're speaking their language. I've seen it in Tree. I've seen it in Yoruba. But the mystery is giving up the fear of death. Nobody's going to get out of this world without shedding this shell. Uh -huh. All the body. Nobody. No matter how long you get to live, you can hit a hundred, become a centurion, and get up there in the hundred and tens and twenties, but you're still going to make the exit out of this cocoon. But the you is not the body. You live in this body because it's necessary. This is like your space uniform. You know, right, to right, in right. this environment. But you're going to have to shed this and get another suit. Maybe your grandchild or your great grandchild. The Yorubas call that aloha. Uh -huh. You go and we come. And we go and come from the family we were always born into. Mm. You know, the Ebi. Let me, let me get so, to this next. We, we, need to, yeah. we need to spend a little time studying our own traditions. There's enough literature out here now. For us to pretend we can't find knowledge on Africa, on an African state of science, we're not telling the truth. But if you want to be in the house of the devil, and you want to behave like the devil, then your consequence would be that of the consequences that befall the devil. You can't complain about nothing. If you made a choice, but you're not making a real choice because ignorance deny you what I know. And so my job is to tell you that ignorance is the greatest enemy you have. Ignorance of who your mother and father was before they were put on the slave ship. Ignorance of who your mother and father was before the Turkish and Arab invasion with their Islam into North Africa and East Africa. Ignorance that existed before the Dutch and the Portuguese and the Spanish and the British and the French and the Germans and the, and the Belgians came. And yet there are people in Africa to this day that don't even know we've had this experience. Because they've never, they never had this experience. And, and they live in the, in, in the woods, in the, in the rural areas of Africa. I remember going to one village and they had these beautiful houses with no windows on them. Right. Wow. They had little slits in the walls. Yeah. And they had windows on the roof, the roof open, and they, they, they hung out on the roof. And wow. the gate was like, the wall was like eight to 10 feet tall, but the gate was two feet tall. Right, right, right. So if you had to get in the yard, you had to creep. And that means your hands can go wacko. You know what I'm saying? You right. won't get in that yard because you had to crawl in. Yeah. And they, that's how they protected themselves against the slave catchers. Mm. Whole mm. villages built like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Let, let, let's get to two more questions. They didn't know where their people went. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. It takes so long. Two more questions, Professor. Two more questions. Um, this individual, uh, Naimi, I hope I'm... I'm Naomi Holtzman wants to know what's the elders' thoughts on reincarnation? Is it possible to get off the wheel of reincarnation? Who would want to get off the wheel? <laughs> See, the, 
you bring in assumptions from other people's religious tradition in the Eastern tradition, especially in India and China, some of those areas, they have this concept of reincarnation and they come back as all kinds of other things. In the African tradition, reincarnation, you only come back as a human and you only come back in the family that you were originally manifested, that you never come out of that Ibi. The Shit. first person in your family born a million some years ago, that same line keeps repeating itself. Wow. And that's the line you will constantly come back in to further yourself. I'm my great, 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 great grandfather. I'm him and grandmother. I'm not something separate from them. I'm them gone forward. They were me in a time before this time. I am the same them in this time. And I've taken that aspect of me and created my children, who is me going forward in the next time. So reincarnation, the way we think of it in the West, that you die, then you come back as a bumblebee, a butterfly, or even another human, that's not how the African see it. The African sees you as a constant repetition of yourself. So when a baby is born in, in a Yoruba household, an Akana household, all the elders and the priests and everybody is called to come. And the first three days are devoted to one thing. Who is this child? Mm. Is it a new body of energy that has arrived? Mm -hmm. Or is it an old energy? And if it is, who is it? And only then they determine what the name is going to be. And that takes another four days to make sure they got it right. And then they bring the baby out and introduce it to the public. And that's called the outdooring. Wow. <laughs> Wow. So, so we, we take it seriously that there's no such thing as death. Life never ends. It transforms. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said earlier, when I eat a tomato, a carrot, a collard greens, a piece of kale, what am I eating? I'm eating the dirt, the minerals that they absorb to create it themselves so that they can be ingested by me to create myself. Right. When I eat the beef, the beef ate the grass, right? Mm. That's all he eat. That big old thing eats grass. He's a vegetarian. Mm. Right? And, but the minerals that he gets from that grass, I then extract from him in the form of a certain type of protein, right? Which energize me to keep this organism going. Mm -hmm. It's all one thing. I am the cow. I am mm. the collard greens. You know, I'm the kale. I'm the tomato. Take away the kale, the tomato, the collard greens, the beans, the greens, the rice. I don't exist. It's all one thing. No, the definitely. Manifestations of expressions. Definitely, definitely, Professor. Uh, this, and I, I want to end it with this question. This is a question that I guess got everybody debating, and I know you've, you know, you've talked about this before, but uh, the, the, the sister right here, the herbal goddess, wants to know. Can you ask Professor Small about us being indigenous to, to this land? It's a hot topic and on the internet these days. Mother. Yeah, because it's hot topic because people are still ashamed of being Africans. Let me just put that right up front, right out there. We're indigenous to all lands. Mm -hmm. if, we're the, if you go to Australia and we're there, everywhere. you go to New Zealand and we're there, you right. go to India and we're there, New Caledonia and we're there, you go to vietnam and we're there we go to cambodia and be there why the hell wouldn't we be in north america what's <laughs> such a big deal about being in north america except that there's so many africans who feel if i say i was indigenous to this land i can denounce being african because i don't have the courage to be that again i don't have the courage to know that or know how to become that again so tell me show me any proof of your indigenous to this land don't tell me about a couple of little people writing a couple of little notes because I know I have family who was here before Columbus. I used to attend their graves when I was children. We buried in mounds, big hills, and not holes. Most people can't say that. They don't have the experience I have growing up in the Woodside River in Acadia. Mm -hmm. I grew up in an African village, in a native African village. And there's a place just off of my village called Sandy Island. That That's, whew in the middle of two rivers, the Wakamana PD River, where a bunch of my families are from. But we're everywhere. What is the big deal that we would be from America? Were we not in the Caribbean and every island? 
So what's the big deal? What is the point of that discussion? The point of that discussion is an African denunciation in the consciousness of those who are too cowardice to realize if you claim Africa, then you got to claim the war that Africa must fight to be free. Freedom is to be shackled to your identity. People don't want to be shackled to an identity that would require them to fight a revolution. Mm. And so you should know the name of Seiko Odinga. He buried him last week. I knew Seiko Odinga when he was 18 years old. I knew Seiko Odinga when he was a member of Malcolm X OAAU. I knew Seiko Odinga when he started the, the, the Harlem chapter of the Black Panther Party. I knew Seiko Odinga when he founded the Black Liberation Army. I knew Seiko Odinga when he broke us out of Shakur out of prison. I knew Seiko Odinga when they took him away in the 1980s and he spent 33 years in prison on our behalf. 26 of those 32 years he spent in solitary confinement and they couldn't break him. Mm. Because he knew he was an African man. He was wow. the universe. We are the world. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to be the world. I'll be the light skinned world too and the brown skinned world too. Y'all come for me too. Give me India back. Give me <laughs> New Caledonia back. I want Australia. Right. Give me the Mauritius Island. And yes, give me North America. But because some of us was here before the slave ships come on and denounce that part of me that came on the slave ship, what is wrong with y'all? Uh -huh. We are both. We are everything. We are the world. We are indigenous to every land in the world. And I know I was reading something the other day with some of the Native American brothers were laughing at this. Uh -huh. Saying we're trying to take the identity. You're an Asian. A 10,000 year old Johnny come lately. <laughs> we already built our civilization and they had already fallen before you crossed the Bering Strait. Please, mm. you know, get real. But let's study our history. Let's start at Britain, start brother, um, what's his name? Imhotep who passed away, uh, David, mm -hmm. his, his literature. Study Ben Sertima's literature. Study the Jewish guy, what's his name? Who did a good job. Read um, Columbus's notes in his diary. Read Columbus's brother's diary. Read Verrazano diaries. And there's a lot of other literature, but don't come up and just say stuff. Mm -hmm. Find out how are you indigenous? When did you come here? How did you get here? Where did you come from? You didn't grow up out of the ground. And there's some trying to say that, that this is the genesis of humanity and not Africa. Stop being silly. Mm -hmm. This place was under ice for most of its existence. Are you the caveman? <laughs> you know, and maybe. But we live in the Southern Hemisphere. And part of America, North America is in the Southern Hemisphere. All of the Caribbean, Central South America is in the Southern Hemisphere. It's quicker to get from a boat. Me and you can take a rowboat from Ghana and get to the Caribbean in two weeks. Today. Right, right, right. Now Columbus and them got lost out there fooling around. But with a good motorboat, there's some people willing to pay. Some guys just did it a couple of times two years ago. Mm. Africans know how to come and go. We've been coming and going all over the world for hundreds of thousands of years. So it's no big deal that we're indigenous to the North America. And the reason we're making a big deal because we're having an argument with the most recent arrivals from Africa. Stop having that foolish argument and try to find out what y'all need to learn from one another so we can survive this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on the show. Once again, I want to share... Uh, Professor's Cash App. Make sure you support the elder if you can. Uh, Dallasan, yeah. Dr. James. If they think yes. I'm too hard, I'm kind of yeah. sick now. Y'all got to see what I'm sick. You know? Indeed. But, um, we got to be free. Freedom is to be shackled to your identity. My yeah. identity is Africa, whether I'm in Vietnam, India, North America, South America for the last 5,000 years, I'm still African. And if you got a problem with that word, throw that out. Let's pick another word that the people will approve of. But most of the people seem to have accepted that word. So let's mm -hmm. use it. We don't, if it don't work for you, let's get to the consensus to create another one. But no individual saying, I'm going to change my name to Hoopu Padu. No, the consensus <laughs> in the African world is the word Africa. Indeed. Indeed. You got any, any contact info, Professor? Any uh, uh, email? Go to, go to my Facebook page, Professor Small okay. African World. That's why I post everything that I do and try to get as much of my, my stuff out there on mm -hmm. ProfessorSmallAfricanWorld.com. Mm -hmm. 
Professor, as always, uh, I appreciate you for coming on here. Appreciate I appreciate you, for, you, brother Rich. For, I appreciate um, you for y'all. You're such an inspiration, my brother. You're going so strong at, we said you're 76, my brother? No, 78. Proud of 78, too. I'm trying to hit 80. Then I'll say, oh, wow, I made 80. I'm trying to hit the 90, you know. That's, a, that's amazing. Make, I'm trying to give the people everything I learned. Yeah. I share it with you. Yeah. And, and, and the biggest thing I've learned is how much I haven't learned at all and how much I don't know. Mm. And how broken I am. I talk to you and they, but be, I'm just as broken as you are. But I'm trying to fix me. All right. Yeah. I'm fractured. I'm fragmented. I'm cracked. And sometimes I slide back, but I'm constantly trying to fix me. And the only thing I know that can fix me is the womb of my mother. And the womb of my mother is a black African woman mm. and a black African culture and a black African spiritual system. That's the only thing that can fix me. Indeed. Indeed. Indeed, Professor. Always an honor. I love the yeah. statue behind you. The statue, it's been uh it's been it's been powerful. I yeah, got I got my own, I got my own statue too, Professor. You can't see it. I see it. Yeah, yeah, I got my so we love both. it. And that, that's our culture. Don't let we're not gonna let nobody take our culture from right. India or Asia. Right. We've allowed people to take our stuff. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so I'm gonna recommend at least one book. Uh -huh. Because Welcome. you showed me your statue. It's Welcome. called the Threefold Lotus Sutra. Hold up, Professor. Let me write this down right now. Hold up now. Don't don't go nowhere. Hold up. Let me write this down. You said the three fold F O L D uh, Lotus, Lotus Sutra. Sutra. When you read it, you think you're reading Yoruba. Yeah. It's three of the oldest sutras that Buddha ever brought forward. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna buy it tonight. It's on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna buy it tonight, Professor. Next time I talk to you, I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna send you a picture of the book. I'm gonna send you a All picture. Right. Of it. Yeah. Okay. But, it's but, a hundred book. When you yeah. read that, you're like, damn, because mm. it talks about just what we're talking about now. It breaks it down in little pieces. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look, looking forward to it. Thank you once again, Professor. Thanks to everybody Thank in the everybody. chat Thank for everybody. coming Thank tonight. You. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for letting me mess with y'all a little bit, but I want you to think past the box. Matter of fact, Ted, burn the box down and just walk free, you know? Right, indeed. Burn indeed. all the boxes down. Don't even be no Yoruba, don't even African religion. Africa ain't got no religion. We have a sacred science understanding of our relationship to the rest of the universe. Oh, uh, powerful. That's Thank you, family. Amazing. We're getting out of here. I, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to call you tomorrow, Professor. Yes, sir. Peace right. and blessings. Peace.